Welcome back, it's Peter Barlas, cardiologist. So what if I told you that a heart attack and how extensive it is, is not determined by the amount of cholesterol that's sitting in the wall of the artery, but in fact it's determined by the amount of clot that builds up inside the artery. That's what we're gonna talk about today. The classification of heart attacks and how each of these is managed. So when somebody presents with a suspected heart attack and we've covered the symptoms of heart attack in our previous video, we undertake a series of very simple preliminary tests. One of the important ones is called an electrocardiogram. And this provides a snapshot of what actually is going on within the heart itself. There is a pattern that we look for on the electrocardiogram that determines whether someone is having the classical major or acute heart attack. And that is a change in one of the patterns or lines that we see on the ECG called the ST segment. When this ST segment is raised, there is high probability that there may be a complete blockage of the artery. When this is lacking, then we classify this as a non-ST elevation heart attack or myocardial infarction. The importance of distinguishing between these two major types of heart attacks lies in how quickly we need to go and perform further tests. And again, I see that it's not all about the amount of cholesterol that determines which heart attack one may have. If you look at this plaque here, over this plaque you see in this model is this white rim of tissue that sits within the wall of the artery. And in fact, a heart attack happens when this rim of tissue called the fibrous cap breaks off. So when that cap breaks off, then you've got bits of the artery and the contents of the arterial wall, including the fatty plaque and the cholesterol and the inflammatory cells that become exposed to the blood cells within the artery itself. And these cells, including a group called platelets, work to try to actually help and improve and address the damage. But in doing that, they form a clot. And that's like when we have a cut, our body tries to heal the cut and often forms a scab to try to stop it from bleeding. Well, that's exactly what is going on within the artery. When a bit of this cap breaks off, there is some damage and then the body forms this scab to try to heal and restore normal function. But that response, however, causes the problem. And when the clot forms, that affects the blood flowing within the artery. And if there is a complete blockage with complete uh, occlusion or blockage of the artery with clot, well then no blood can travel. And that means no blood, no oxygen to the heart muscle, and the heart muscle is at risk. If that's happening, we need to treat this very, very promptly. And the major way nowadays that we treat this is we perform an urgent angiogram. And that allows us to then place a device called a stent to open the blockage and then restore blood flow again. Where this service or where the cath lab equipment is not available, then there may be a need to administer a very strong clot-busting drug through the vein. And that works again to try and dissolve the clot that is formed to open up the artery and restore blood flow. So again, that is the major type of heart attack or the classical heart attack that we know of. 
But you might have heard, also heard of people saying, well, yes, I was in hospital for a few days and I had a minor heart attack. Well, what does that all mean? Well, I don't really like the differentiation of major and minor. I think you know all heart attacks are major and they need to be treated very aggressively, optimally, to ensure that we get an excellent result. But when you do hear this term of a minor heart attack, what we're essentially describing is that there hasn't been complete blockage of the artery with clot. So perhaps a little bit of this tissue has broken off, but there's been only a small amount of clot that has built up and not a complete blockage. And here you see quite nicely in this illustration where I've performed a very high resolution scan of inside the artery. And you can see quite clearly this dark area here is what the cholesterol plaque looks like on this type of scan. And you can see that bright rim of tissue that I call the cap or the fibrous cap that sits on top of the cholesterol plaque has broken off. And then the body has formed a small amount of clot or thrombus. Now this person presented with a non-ST elevation myocardial infarct or an N-STEMI. So distinguishing between the ST elevation infarct and the non-ST elevation infarct is very important because it dictates how urgently we need to perform the life-saving angiogram procedure. And in this situation, the angiogram and having a look to see where the blockage is and fixing the blockage up is potentially life-saving. And the quicker we can do that, the better. When there is a non-STEMI or when there is a small amount of clot and not a complete blockage, then we don't have to immediately jump in to perform the test. And we can often wait, say, for 24 or 48 hours. But the treatment principles are the same, that we need to control the underlying risk factors. So essentially we're looking at controlling what has caused this cholesterol to build up in the first place. And we've talked previously in our videos on smoking, high blood cholesterol levels, high blood sugar and diabetes, high blood pressure, sedentary life, a family history and genetics, all play a factor in development of cholesterol. But we also have to address the issue of clots forming. And that's why we often use medications to reduce the stickiness of our blood and to stop these clots from forming again. So hopefully this information has been useful to try and demystify the classification of heart attacks. Again, you will hear major, minor, STEMI, non-STEMI, all are important. So we don't shy away from the fact that even if the artery isn't completely blocked, every type of presentation with a suspected heart attack is important and requires prompt attention and often achieving excellent long-term outcomes. Thank you very much and look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye for now.